What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and today we're going to be talking about a firearm that I came around, I came back for, and I think I made a good decision, because this is a firearm I truly loved, I truly enjoyed, mine just didn't run at the time, and we'll get into it, but this is the Mossberg MC2 SC. And before we get started, I want to say hit the like button, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, it all helps. If you love firearms, firearm reviews, everyday carry product reviews, over here we upload daily. I put out tons of content, I work really hard on this stuff, I work really hard on testing firearms, um, parts, magazines, base plates, all sorts of things over here. So it all helps and that's a free way for you guys to do it, so I'd really appreciate it. And if you guys are looking for holster options for your Mossberg MC2SC, Hog Holsters makes an awesome holster. Now, I know the sweat guard looks a little different, but when you put this holster on, which you can use this with gym shorts, sweatpants, bathing suits, snow pants, literally anything, this thing is amazing. This takes shape to your body perfectly to the contour and allows to protect that firearm from sweat and other stuff. But at the same time, your draw is very nice. It uses very thin, minimal material. A great quality holster. Absolutely love this thing. And on top of that, someone front that supports the channel and watches the channel makes their own holsters and they said they would send one in so i will do a video when that happens um because that'll be great but anyways hog holsters check them out now of course of course of course the firearms are unloaded of course at my own house with my own legal firearms right so we're just going to get that out of the way one thing i heard said about this when i posted a couple videos about it is someone said is oh that trigger's terrible and i looked at their name and their name was Glock Boy something or something Glock, right? And I'm like, you said this trigger is bad, but your name is Glock and you carry Glock, but it is what it is. We'll get into that. So this right here is 11 rounds with a flush mag. This firearm does a lot of great things and a lot of great things better than Glock, right? The Glock 43X and 48, which are basically interchangeable, when it first came out, didn't come with a rail. Didn't come optics ready, right? It took them a couple years or a year or whatever it was to release the MOS version, right? This Mossberg is what the 40X, 43X should have been, right? Like I said, the ability to shrink it down and have 11 plus 1, 12 rounds. That's plenty for self-defense, right? But then also the ability to run reliably. Keyword, reliably. The 43X has a rough time. Go look at my poll I just took about shield arms and Palmetto State Armory micro dagger mags. You might want to rethink carrying with, with those aftermarket mags. But anyways, this is a 14 plus 1 setup. And this size is identical to the Glock 43X in every dimension, basically. But what this has is, it doesn't have the ergonomics of 43X has. It has pretty good. It's pretty comparable. But what it does have is amazing texturing. No grip needed for this. Nothing have to be put on. It just works. Every thing just functions flawlessly. Also, Metgar mags, which are going to be one of the best magazine companies in the world and really help firearms become reliable in the firearm they are today. So shout out to Metgar. On top of that, memory pads. People don't care about these, but I think they're big. One, to help you fight some recoil with your support hand, and two, to remind yourself, keep that finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And your brain, if you carry that firearm and shoot it enough and train with it, your brain will always remember these spots. It'll be second nature to you. It'll just be something that happens, and you'll, your brain will say, okay, it's in the safe spot. Metal sights, and that is a U. I'm going to show you a U-notch rear. But they are three-dot sights, not night sights, but you can get the night sight version, and I can put night sights on it. Like I said, optics ready. Comes with a rail. But thing, this thing is just on point. And at a $450 price, price point, what more can you ask for? They don't give you a bunch of extras. They don't give you anything, but they give you a pretty complete firearm right out of the box, right? Now, when it comes down to it, things I really like about it are, like I said, the ergonomics. It feels really good in the hand, really natural, a very natural point of aim, similar to the 43X. The other thing is I do like that trigger. Now, what's weird about this firearm is it came with the cross bolt safety. I didn't know that. I must have not read the description properly or something, but the cheapest model was the one I bought, and it happened to be the one with the cross bolt safety. See how that works? Then you flip it back, and you got that trigger pull, right? So for those who like safeties, this is another option Glock doesn't offer, obviously, but Glocks are very safe to carry, so you don't need to worry about having a manual safety. But I know some people like them. It's just going to be a different style of training. You're going to have to train with your trigger finger to turn that off and then jump up to your trigger, which if you train that, it'll be just fine. But for me, I'm just not going to touch it. And it's a stiff enough safety to where if you don't mess with it on purpose, it's not going to accidentally turn on, which is nice because some people will ride the slide and turn on their manual safety. So having it down here is actually pretty dang smart. And I believe they call it a cross bolt safety, right? 
But anyways, here's that trigger that they were saying is worse than a Glock, ready? First of all, it's a flat face trigger. Very nice flat face trigger, ready? A little longer reset, but I mean, it's so crisp, audible. There is no false reset in there. There's no sloppiness. It is just very crisp and nice. I actually really like it. I think defensive triggers shouldn't be too light. They also shouldn't have too short of a reset. And on top of that, I like having a bigger trigger guard. So in the winter, if I'm wearing gloved fingers or gloved hands, I can put a gloved finger in that trigger guard and not accidentally compress that trigger or decompress that trigger or pull it or mess with it in any way. And you have to train with how you carry, right? Where I live, it gets cold and I wear gloves for part of the time, right? So you have to be able to shoot with gloves on and I wear Magpul gloves um, and they'll definitely fit in this trigger guard, which is actually pretty nice. Now, the downside of this firearm is one, holster options, which I already touched on a little bit. But the main thing is finding a light that works with this firearm. And on top of that, now finding a holster that fits that light, right? Um, and just other aftermarket support, like if you have something go wrong, finding parts for it, stuff like that, is definitely not going to be anywhere, anywhere close to a Glock or Smith & Wesson or SIG when it comes to aftermarket support. But if enough people keep buying these firearms, maybe one day they can get there. But I think this is really well built and it's come a long way. I actually had the first Mossberg MC1SC. I had the stainless steel version, and what was crazy about it is one, it took Glock 43 OEM mags, but the crazier part was Mossberg's first pistol release, they used ETS mags. And if you know ETS mags, they are trash, they're plastic, their springs are bad, there's just nothing good about them. And it was odd that they released a stock pistol running ETS mags. It was just a very interesting thing. Um, I think that played a hand in some of the reliability issues they were having and other stuff like that. But so far, this one's been so good. Um, big fan of this firearm. It's a great shooter. Um, very easy to learn to shoot. I think this is a great start-off self-defense firearm for people. I think for everyday carry, this is the way to go. Uh, it's not going to break the bank. It's going to come with a lot right out of the box. Um, they don't give you too much, but they just give you enough to carry right out of the box. Obviously, you got to test your firearm, test your hollow, stuff like that. And you also, can, if you really had to, you now have a home defense setup. 14 plus 1, 15 rounds is plenty. Throw, throw your light on there and you're good to go. So if it really came down to it, this could function in multiple roles. And with that flush mag, it's comparable in size to a Hellcat, um, a Sig P365, and so on. So you could pocket carry this if you really wanted to. It's smaller than an XDS from Springfield, if you're familiar. Um, smaller than a Walther PPS, just a little thicker. But this thing right here can be carried in many ways. It's a very versatile firearm, very well made, um, no, no drag on the slide, um, and very tight tolerances. I mean, it's just a really well made firearm. So as long as this one doesn't have the light primer strikes that my other one had, then we should be good. But let me tell you a story. My Mossberg MC2SC was one of my favorite firearms, right? I finally found a holster. It was a mediocre holster, but it was enough to carry with because I loved this firearm as much. And a big thing about a carry firearm is being in love with it, it having your heart, you truly liking it to the point where you're like, I want to shoot this thing. I want to go to the range. Even though it's small, it may be snappy like people say. I want to shoot it. I want to get good with it. And I think that's a big thing. And that's how I felt about the Mossberg. Now, I had some weird things happen. Light primer strikes were the number one thing. And it was weird because the way you take this firearm down is every time you do it, you're touching that striker. And if you know the striker's oils from your hands, oils from cleaning your firearm, stuff like that, lubricants, That'll cause some light primer strikes, but I was having light primer strikes like crazy. Almost every magazine with my first Mossberg MC2SC. Sent it in. They claim they fix it. I got it back. It still had light primer strike issues, even with the best primers, best defensive ammo, and so on. So I got rid of it. This has ran great so far. But the weird story I'm going to tell you is this is the only firearm I've ever had a squib load in. It was not the firearm's fault. I had some Remington ammo, and I learned a valuable lesson from this firearm, right? This was probably two years ago. I was shooting. And I heard that signature and felt that signature squib noise and feel. And I was like, something's wrong. So I immediately put the firearm down. I let it chill for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I regroup, pick it up, lock it back, and yep, I got a squib. But not only was it a squib, but a backward squib. So obviously I had a round that came from Remington backwards. It was Remington UMC 9mm, that white box with the green and black on it. I'm sure you all know it. And I wasn't paying attention while loading my mags. That day I learned I need to pay attention to every single round I have. 
and you're going to say, oh, you should have known that. Well, it's a learning lesson, and that's how, that's how it is in firearms. You learn as you go. You get better as you go. You take in information, and you learn from your mistakes. It's just part of life. It's part of firearms, but that day I learned I need to look at every single round I'm loading my firearms, not be distracted by my phone, distracted talking to someone, because that could cost you your life. That could cost you your hand. That could cause some issues. Um, so that was interesting. Not the Mossberg's fault. It was my fault from loading that into my firearm and also Remington for sending that out. Um, but ammo's quality control has absolutely gone downhill over the last three years. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, the Mossberg MC2SC is that one firearm that I definitely had to circle back and go get. Anyways, guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.